sometimes we're given an exponential function to solve where we can't just use equating indices anymore to be able to find the solution when our variable is an exponent. But we can use some of our factorizing laws that we have previously to still solve these kinds of equations. For example, if I've got this 4 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. I can first factorize this into two brackets and then use the null factor law to solve it. To do that, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to use the index law to rewrite 4 to the power of x, which can be rewritten as 2 to the power of x all squared. The advantage of doing that now is this middle term is the same as this part inside the brackets here. So I'm now adding 2 to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. Now why that's useful to us is I want you to consider if you just let uh, a equal 2 to the power of x. So you're just letting the a represent 2 to the power of x. This can be rewritten as, well, this will be a squared plus a minus 20 is equal to 0. Well, if I was wanting to factorise this here, I can factorise this using sum and product. So in this case, I'm looking for a sum that's equal to positive 1 and a product that's equal to negative 20. So looking at this now, what two numbers can we think of that have a sum of positive 1 and a product of negative 20? Well, that would be negative 4 and positive 5. So this can be rewritten as a take 4, a plus 5 is equal to 0. And I've factorised this left hand side. But remember, our a is 2 to the power of x. So I can factorise this by replacing my a with 2 to the power of x. So when I do that, that'll be 2 to the power of x minus 4 and 2 to the power of x plus 5. And that'll still equal 0. So now I've factorised this here into two linear factors. And because this is a number multiplied by another number that's equal to 0, I can now use the null factor law that says that either this 2 to the power of x minus 4 has to equal 0, or the 2 to the power of uh, x plus 5 is equal to 0. One of these has to be equal to 0 for this to be true. So let's start with the 2 to the power of x plus 5 is equal to 0. Well, to solve this, I'd need to move the 5 to the other side. So this would be 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 5. But now I know it's a problem. I've got 2 to the power of x is equal to a negative number. It doesn't matter what value of x I put in, I cannot make this a negative number. So therefore, my 2 to the power of x cannot equal negative 5. So this part here cannot be solved. So it means that we've only got one solution, or potentially one solution, that's this side. So if I now look at this side and rearrange here, 2 to the power of x will equal positive 4. And now I can go about equating my indices. So let's look at 2 to the power of x. 4 is 2 to the power of 2. So therefore, my x is equal to positive 2. And there's only one solution here because the other part of it can't actually be solved. So as you can see here, even when we're given these exponential equations, we can still factorise these and apply the null factor law that we did previously to be able to find the solution of x.